Hello and welcome to my Panzer Core Let's Play. I want to show you the Wehrmacht campaign on Rommel difficulty. Um, to make things a little bit more interesting, we will avoid reloading and we will play semi blind, meaning we will only use information we actually scouted. Well, let's start and take a look at the difficulties. Um, I've played the game once and completed it on Field Marshal, which was well, quite interesting, but in the end a little bit disappointing because your units get only half the experience points, but you get full prestige points. Um, this leads to an army composition, well, that's not really historically correct. Um, you can afford all the units and the historic German army was fielding a lot of obsolete units. So that's where Rommel difficulty comes into play. Here you only get half the prestige and this forces a much more realistic and in my opinion more fun army composition. Um, there got two other difficulties unlocked. Um, the first is Guderian. Uh, here you have five turns less to complete the missions, which is, well, I think quite ridiculous because you basically have to memorize all the maps and that's not the way I like to play. Um, the other option is Manstein. Here you no, the enemy units get five more strength points. This could be fun, but well, we'll go for Rommel. So we'll start the game and listen to the briefing. Greetings, Herr General. As you are now well aware, High Command has ordered the initiation of hostilities against Poland. Operation Fallweiss must proceed at full pace as we suspect that the British and the French will eventually come to aid of the Poles. To that effect, you have been given the task of securing the heart of the Polish nation. Take the capital, Warsaw and the nearby cities of Lodz and Krakow. Achieving your goals quickly may allow you the opportunity to participate in additional operations. Failure, however, is not an option. Good luck, Herr General. I and all of Germany await word of your success. So welcome to Poland. Um, we have 17 turns to complete our, no, actually we have five turns less to complete all our objectives and we have great weather. This is, this is actually quite important because our air force will only be efficient when there's clear and dry weather. Um, I plan to explain a lot of the basic principles of the game in the first mission uh, and move on to more advanced tactics later on. So if you already know the game, I hope you don't get bored and maybe you will learn one thing or two. So let's take a look at the strategic situation. Um, well, around here we have what was historically Army Group South. There were three, three armies led by Rundstedt and originally there should be an Army Group North, which, well, spoiler alert, won't come. So we are on our own. I want to show some of the Blitzkrieg tactics which were actually used. So Blitzkrieg is all about applying superior forces to a single point, breaking through and then moving on to the next target. Um, so we will direct the forces uh, around here, hitting Varsha from the back and a second part of our army will move around here so we can encircle Warsaw and hopefully crush the forces there. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I like to keep this information panel up. Um, you can 
see all the unit stats here. I will explain them very briefly. Um, there uh, is the cost of the unit, the movement range, the spotting range, uh, the fire range. So if you see zero here, it means close combat. This means the enemy can shoot back. Um, very important initiative. Um, this tries to emulate technology like being able to shoot at greater distances, being more accurate or better trained. Um, if a unit has higher initiative, it basically gets first strike. So units that get killed or suppressed can't shoot back. So this is very important. Um, here are the different attack values. Um, they apply for both for attack and defense. So it doesn't matter if you're defending or attacking, you always shoot with your attack strengths. Um, soft attack for unarmored targets and hard attack for armored targets. Um, and here we have the ground defense. Um, again, you always defend with your ground defense, doesn't matter if you're attacking or defending. Um, and very important, here's close defense. This applies for rough terrain, like well, woods, hills, or cities. So um, on those terrain, terrain types, the close defense gets replaced by the close uh, the ground defense gets replaced by the close defense, which is especially bad for tanks, obviously, because they rely on strong armor and high ground defense values, well, which don't count for much in cities. So fights in woods and cities tend to be a lot more bloody because, well, the close defense most of the times is really low. Okay, so let's take a look at our first target, this Polish cavalry unit. Um, it has a very high spotting range. It's a scouting unit. You can see basically all around here. And whenever possible, we want to deny the enemy vision. So we'll start by bombarding it. Then we'll encircle it and hopefully well hopefully destroy it yeah okay our next target is the city of Katowice here I will explain two more things um, if you take a look here um, you will see that this unit is entrenched. It has entrenchment level of three, um, which, well, actually, I don't know what it does. I think it gives the unit a higher initiative, um, which obviously is bad for us and more important well, not more important, but important too. If the entrenchment level goes down to zero and all the units are killed or suppressed, the unit will withdraw. Uh, you've already seen back there that this that the cavalry did withdraw. So we will start with our artillery. You will notice that the entrenchment level was reduced to two and five of the units you can see here in the blue numbers got suppressed. Artillery does permanent suppression. So this five units are out of the fight for the next attack. So this is one of the most important functions of artillery, not directly killing units, but more well, suppressing them so our infantry can easily attack the city. So 
Now, we could bring up our fighter, bombard the city, but then the entrenchment level would go down to 1. And when we attack with our infantry, go down to 0. And this unit might withdraw around here, which we don't want to happen, because then our second infantry is not in range. So we'll, st we'll start up. with an infantry attack, then send in our fighter planes, then f hopefully finish off Yep, the defenders and capture the city. Okay, now we can already take advantage of the limited vision of the enemy. If you look at this infantry here, it has a vision range of 2 and can barely spot our tank here, but it cannot see our fighter that is waiting in the background. Um, if you look at the strategic situation, um, this tank basically is the only important unit the enemies can see, so they will most likely send their bombers here to attack this tank and well, they will run into a nasty surprise because fighters defend around here. Hopefully you can see that later on. Bring up our artillery and attack our final target down here. Well, here's another important thing. Never put your units on a river. Um, if you go here, you can see the estimated outcome of the fight. We would lose six units and destroy only three. That's because on rivers, your attack and defense values are reduced. If we, on the other hand, we go here, well, a lot, of be a lot better, but we can do better still. If we bring up the other units, um, you'll notice that now the odds are much better. That's because now we have a mass attack. Um, all units that can attack, um, I think they decrease the enemy initiative. Um, so we have a much higher chance to gain first strike with our mountain infantry and take fewer losses. So, well, let's see if the estimates are correct. No, not quite. So, um, there's a random factor in play. So, the estimates are only estimates and, well, sometimes the outcome is the opposite. We were rather lucky to this point, but well, the random factor, well, you will see in the following turns, there can be pretty bad outcomes. Right here, they got a rugged defense. Um, well, again, I don't really know what it does, but well, trust me, it's bad. Okay, well, well, let's do it. Okay, so the luck turned and our tank did a very good job. So we can move up here, but we won't attack because it would be rather suicidal. We will have to wait for our air force to, well, make the city, well, to reduce the resistance of the city. So that was the first time turn. What's left is, well, buying some units. Um, we will need more artillery. 
Um, I prefer the towed versions over the self-propelled versions. Um, the self-propelled versions tend to have very low ammunition, so you have to resupply them, which basically means losing a turn. The towed versions are a lot slower, but they have more ammunition and they can be upgraded into more powerful versions later on, while the Sturmpanzer will stay the Sturmpanzer for a long time. So, especially in the Rommel scenario, um, it's better to take the towed versions. Well, at least that's my opinion. We will purchase two of them and prepare for our attack on this city. We will concentrate all our forces around here. And you will notice that's all of our money. Um, if we weren't on Rommel difficulty, we could buy two more units, but well, not for us. So let's check. That's it. Let's end the turn and wait for the Polish Air Force. Okay, um, well, as you've noticed, uh, a fighter can only defend one time, so this fighter got our artillery, well, that's not that bad. So we had to attack the fighter first. Of course, um, if we would have attacked the bomber, the fighter would have defended it. Now we will try to ambush one of their units. Um, they're both damaged and will most likely go to this airfield. If we position our fighter outside vision range, like here, then we'll hopefully run into it and get ambushed. Okay, next. Um, we have to crush this counter attack. So we'll bomb them. And try to get full mass attack bonus in order to reduce our losses. Okay. That didn't work out. Well, that's bad luck. The unit got away. Um, we cannot follow with our tank. And, well, this unit will reinforce and we have to deal with it again next turn. Let's take the city. Move our units. Now we'll wait. Okay. Um, artillery will defend, meaning if we attack this infantry, the artillery will launch a defensive fire and bombard the attacking unit before it can do anything. Well, which obviously we want to avoid. Okay. Not really as good as expected, but it withdraw and on a river, so that's good for us. We'll bring up our units and well, 
hopefully we won't need them but we will try to encircle the city anyway because there's only one unit left um, I think we can already start to bring up our artillery around here and bring up our infantry as well I think this unit should be enough um, we won't attack right now because we want to avoid losses at all costs Because we simply cannot afford to resupply our units. Okay, that's it. Let's wait for our trap. Okay, so that was half of the Polish Air Force. Um, okay, next, um, we still have to get rid of this unit because it's blocking. Oops. Um, it's reinforced, so the newly reinforced units start suppressed so only one of them is going to fight but if they withdraw they regain their well they recover from the suppression and will start to fight so well Okay. So I hope that's enough and we'll finally get them. We won't position ourselves on the river because we would be very vulnerable. We will wait for artillery support um, in the meantime we can start attacking around here oh. well that did nothing but at least it reduced the entrenchment um we will first try to take this city and then decide what to do next we will start up by bombarding the city uh, we almost completely suppressed the unit so we shouldn't take any losses. Well, should. Okay, you normally you shouldn't attack a city with a tank uh, because of the close 
defense problem I already explained but this unit is a non-core unit so we'll only have it for this mission you can recognize them by the silver circle the core units have a golden one those will accompany us for the whole campaign hopefully so we have to look out for them because as i already said we cannot afford to reinforce them Dur during the missions um you can well reinforce them you can buy replacements for free but they will lose their experience um, or most of the or some of the experience depending on how many um, recruits you have to buy so the fresh troops start with zero experience and well replace those that have full experience um, there's the possibility to buy elite re replacements um, which cost a lot of money but you won't won't lose any experience oh uh, well the problem is we don't have much prestige so we can only use this to a limited amount um okay well let's take the city and start redeploying our artillery we should be out of vision range right here And we will embark this tank on a train. This uh, well gives a really big movement range, and we can bring it. Uh, sorry, we can bring it up to this city. and can take it once the tank, tank disembarks okay that's it um, we will save here and well I hope you've enjoyed this first part we will continue shortly after this well, see you in the next video. Bye.